Okay. Hello, my name is Vishal Shah, Senior Director of Product Marketing for VR Displays and Automotive uh, Touch and Display Solutions. And today we are showcasing our latest generation of display driver for VR displays. Uh, the one that right now you're looking at is our latest micro OLED display driver uh, with the 4K, 4K displays, uh, 1.35 inch micro OLED display. Uh, 4K 4K at 120 Hz refresh rate. That's a, that's the same display that similar display technology that enables the Apple Vision Pro. And so, so what do you enable with this? So we enable the scalability. So micro OLED is a new technology and very a very very expensive technology. So it requires a silicon backplane uh, because of the very small pixel density, very fast refresh rate. You do need a silicon backplane. By having a silicon backplane, it adds a lot of cost to the display. Now, if you do want, if you do want to enable also the display driver as a part of the backplane, which is the previous generation of the technology, it becomes extremely costly proposition. Uh, so, what we are enabling is the first in the industry display driver with silic with the chip on silicon technology that can mount on this. Our our display driver can be mounted on the silicon backplane of the display. That way, the, the display can be at the cheaper process node where, while you can have the display driver at the very advanced process node to provide the high performance that is required for the display driver and make keeping the display relatively cheaper uh, in, uh, versus the integrated driver in the display. So we enable display different sizes of the micro OLED with a cost-effective solution without giving up on the performance. So, um, without revealing too much on prices and everything, but how much can people hope that this will help bring the price down? It, it's significantly, it's factor of, multi factor factor uh, uh, of, of dollars that it can bring down. Most, maybe two times or three times cost down. Really? Uh, yeah, 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 because of the size of the display. It really depends on the size of the display and now, as we see, we, we do need a little bit larger size of display to get a meaningful experience. So to ha you have to have a display driver separate from the silicon backplane that's driving the micro OLED. And that, that can save a significant amount of cost. Uh, so when you talk about this silicon backplane, can, can you try to explain what's, what does it mean? So it, it, in, in the traditional display where, uh, where the, the TFT backplane is, it's glass, glass uh, substrate. In this case, uh, you, you can't have, because micro OLED require the VR application requires extremely high pixel density, 3,000, higher than 3,000 pixel per inches. That's a lot of pixel packed in one, one square inch of the display. You can't do that with a glass substrate. For that, you need a silicon substrate. And when you have a silicon substrate, it's just like another chip. CMOS circuit that, that you have on the display with the silicon backplane, which adds to the cost, right? And that's that's the fundamental difference between micro OLED with the OLED on silicon versus the typical OLED with the glass backplane. So that means behind it, look, the material is the same that goes in a big one inch CPU. Uh, like that's silicon. exactly, yes. It's, like it's just like piece of silicon. silicon. It's a big piece of silicon with micro OLED pixels on, 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 on that silicon. So yeah, it, it, is a, it is a very expensive display on a chip. And, and you put the chip on? Silicon. So the, what we do with that is, is actually we are, we are mounting our silicon, our display driver, which is also a chip, uh, mount on this chip, of, which is the display chip. So we are mounting display driver on the silicon, our, our chip on the silicon, which is the display driver display. Because a display driver otherwise, in a, let's say, current system, is separate, and that it's, means it's extra cost? No, or? it's also, display driver is separate, but it's mounted on the glass. So we call it chip on glass, because current displays, which is not silicon-based backplane, we, they are glass-based uh, backplane. And so we mount our display driver on the glass, which is very mature technology. Mounting the chip, the display driver, on a silicon-based, display, which is chip on silicon, that's the first in the industry for us when it comes to display drivers. So that means you are partnering with all these companies that do the micro OLED? That's correct. We and are, there's a bunch here. Huh, there are a bunch of them off. in the show. Uh, we, and we are partnering with almost everything right now on the floor. 
we are partnering with them on with our display driver. So, I'm not trying to to uh, find any the name of the customers, but here at this show, uh, I think there's talk of Sony, Samsung, LG, and a bunch of other ones. Everybody showing the latest micro OLED, and they need to work with you. They do need to work with us. I'm not gonna say who are we working with and who are we not, but yes. Everybody with this, who's working on this technology, they need to work with us and we are engaged with multiple of them. And that could help get the price down from 3,500 to maybe something else. Yeah, for you're referring to Apple Vision Pro. The end consumer yeah, price. Yeah, end consumer price. So yeah, that the, if you look at the reports of, teardown reports of Apple Vision Pro, the m most expensive part of that Vision Pro is their display, two micro OLED displays. And because of it's, it's the technology they are currently using, it's significantly expensive. And what we are trying to do is bring that cost down and make it a more, more mass market ready product uh, to, to be integrated into the next generation of the VR displays. And to get the cost down, I guess it's also a question of how they make the micro OLED, uh, and the yields need to be good and everything. Yeah. Do you help with that in any way? Uh, we do help with that actually, yes, we do. So, so there are different components when it comes to the yield, when the display does not look good, uh, uh, or, or there is a there is a dead pixel, or there is anything that's not looking good on the display, automatically falls into different bins of the yield. And we, because of our our display driver expertise in various markets and also our advanced technology investment on this micro OLED itself, the display driving part of it, uh, we ensure that the, those fall out because of the display artifact it's minimized and hence improve the yield of the display as well. So yeah, we do help improve the yield, and hence bring the cost down. How do you say you, you help it fall out? What does it mean? Yield fallout. Fallout means failure of the, uh, uh, failure because of the, the yield re reduction in the good part, meaning yield, lower yield, because of the failure of the parts, right? That's called, we call a fallout. So do you think this display is mainly kind of like a VR application? Uh, like your photos behind here, showing the full covered uh, system. I mean, you can have a camera pass-through uh, solution, but That's correct. it's not so much for AR, that this size? Not, not this particular display, because for AR you require transparent displays, right? And, and that, for that you need a waveguide-based solution, uh, which, is, which, is, which is very small display. If you have a, such a large display in front of your eye, it's not transparent. So yeah, it is more MR type of use case, uh, mixed reality, uh, type of use case compared to AR. And uh, here you have another solution. What, is, what do we see here? So yeah, that's our latest uh, the generation of the display driver called R63457. This is, we just just have the samples in, and this is, this is our 28 nanometer display driver for LCD displays uh, with local dimming, uh, the lens correction technology, as well as uh, foveal transfer. So, there are lots of new features and, and, and local dimming as we, uh, uh, local dimming technology also it helps provide OLED-like contrast ratio on the LCD screen. Uh, the way this display is designed, it looks to me like uh, potentially with the right kind of lens and everything, you can have very big field of view. Exactly. The, the, so for VR or MR user experience, having a large field of view is very essential. So the displays are designed that way. The display resolution also matters a lot. And, and this display can, our, our 63457 enables 3K, 3K resolution uh, up to 4, up to 4.5, depending on the, the, the type of the display. So it essentially creates a very high pixel per inch displays, which enables high field of view as well. And and you're gonna do all the local dimming and everything? Yeah, it has the local dimming that, that provides very, very high contrast ratio uh, just without having to go through OLED. And also it has a color uh, correction, uh, it has our color correction IP, it has our lens correction IP, which provides optical correction because of the VR. There is a lot of optical distortion happens because of the multiple lenses in the VR headset. So we have a correction algorithms for that. And we also help lower the overall bandwidth and hence the power consumption of the d device by technology called foveal rendering, foveal scaling. So that, that essentially tracks your eyes and provides a high resolution 
display is only where the eye is looking, where human eye can perceive the, the depth of the or the detail of the display. And outside of the, the foveal region of the, of the retina, you can have a low resolution display. That way you don't have to transport very high bandwidth data, hence reduce the bandwidth and reduce the power consumption. So that's maybe also potentially another way you will help this VR, MR market to get maybe also lower cost because sometimes LCD that's helps right. with that, right? Yeah, 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 and LCD, yes, exactly. And LCD, micro OLED is still in early development cycle, so the costs are too high. Not everybody can use it for end user with price conscious and users for who want to try VR market, LCD is still very attractive type of display solution. So yeah, having local dimming enable LCD screen can provide similar user experience, uh, very rich user experience, not at the very rich price point that micro OLED has. And it also looks like it's bigger, potentially, so that helps with the potentially the field of view in yes. the system will be more immersive potentially. That's still true. super high resolution. Yes, I mean uh, the micro OLED screen sizes are smaller just because of the cost reasons as well. But but yes, uh, you're right that the display size needs to be bigger to enable field of view, and because micro OLED still has a cost barrier there, LCD provides enable that high resolution and high field of view by enabling the larger display sizes. And always the argument out, out there is sometimes that the LCD can be higher peak brightness. That's, potentially. Yes, yes. That also helps with the experience. That also helps with the experience. Uh, unlike micro, unlike OLED material where you, you, you can't have super high brightness. Although micro OLED can get a very high brightness, but again it comes with the, uh, some, some concerns on the lifetime. So LCD can provide you ultra high brightness. That's so, correct. Uh, this solution is new? This is our brand new uh, display driver. We have just sa started sampling this. This is the first samples of a display uh, that, that, that showcases uh, very, high, very high resolution and very high contrast on LCD screen. So there's uh, some very, very big companies in China, I think, right, yeah. who, who have huge investment in LCD business. That's right. And they need to work with you. Absolutely. Anybody who is doing VR display, has to work with synaptics if you if you know the if you look up synaptics history in this market we we have 95 percent of the market and we have the rich experience in the market we are the first one to who introduce local uh, the 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 dedicated display driver for vr market so we have tons of experience so yeah everybody who is looking to invest in this market needs should work with synaptics and it's awesome that you're talking about helping to bring the price down yes because when the price is down potentially tens of millions of people are going to buy it. Exactly. Right now, a lot of people are, are, are sitting on the edge whether they want to buy it or not because this technology is still early stage of development. So if you can help bring the cost down, that will also help adoption of more users getting to experience this market. And when you were mentioning before the foveated rendering stuff, is that another silicon piece of silicon just doing that? No, no, that's all done in the, in the same silicon. We can. It's all done by both both of this micro drive, micro LED, micro OLED, and uh, LCD driver supports four wheel rendering and four wheel transfer. So that's 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 our core secret sauce in the, that we help pr bring the cost down. Because I could imagine it needs a lot of processing to do a nice foveated that. AI rendering and the and the speed and everything. True. We can do everything. We can do everything, and it, it's not only. It's also how to do it. We how to do it smart way, right? And sometimes you don't want to throw too much data and require tons of processing because processing comes at the power. This is a portable device with the battery life being one of the key aspect aspect for usability. So you want to make sure you can optimize the processing with the minimal amount of power power drain and then increase the battery life. So yeah, we do it efficiently. And uh, so you talk about the RAR right here, and I see a bunch of uh, images on, on the, the presentation about the different solutions there. Um, do you also work on the AR? So AR is the, so MR, when, I, when we talk about MR, that, that's, that has aspects of AR, but AR, a standalone AR has a, a transparent displays and it requires a very, very tiny display, which cannot have external display drivers. So, so because we are primarily, our solution is the display driver, 
So we don't have a dedicated solution for AR, but having said that, our display driver enables mixed reality, which in incorporates the uh, aspects of AR. Uh, they cannot have display driver because they're too small, you say? Too small, yeah. The so display, what do they do? So then they have display driver integrated as a part of the silicon. All right. Yeah. And But when you do a specific display driver solution, you have potential for much more performance? Absolutely, yeah. Because you, you cannot have for high performance, you require a higher process node, uh, which is more costly. So sometimes you do want a chip ASIC that to do high high processing, and not not pay for the display doing all the processing. Do you work with the SOC designers to add your ASIC in their SOC? So we work with S, uh, a different SOC partner to enable the ecosystem to make sure what we enable in our display driver is complemented by the capabilities of the SOC. So, so we enable the advanced features like lens correction, four-wheel rendering. We enable those features by working with SOC, but don't necessarily integrate our ASIC into the different. And maybe, I don't know, if you need to consider all the AI stuff that's happening, uh, and then integrate it somehow with what you do. So there is, there is a lot of, so right now our display driver is all hardware-based solution, so uh, but yeah, we are, we are exploring the more use cases of AI by adding additional component uh, in our display driver. In this current moment, it's more all hardware-based solution.